When Apple announced the 14 and 16 inch M1 MacBook Pros this fall, they really hyped up the new six speaker audio system that delivers quote unquote 80% more bass and adds support for spatial audio and Dolby Atmos. But come on, these are puny laptop speakers. You can't beat physics, right? Well, I got to admit that the moment I fired up my new 16 inch MacBook Pro, I was very impressed with the audio. Not only did it sound louder and more accurate, they're definitely doing a lot of spatial audio magic that creates a pretty amazing 3D soundstage. It's sort of like a dome of sound floating between you and the screen, with imaging depth and separation of instruments well beyond what you'd expect, even with fancy external speakers. Spatial audio aside, how much better are these speakers than previous generations? In my tests with the microphone placed at head level, I got 88 decibels of output with pink noise, and the frequency response was surprisingly flat. Joe and Tell measured the sound of the new versus older MacBook Pros and found the M1 versions to have a flatter and more accurate frequency response, much deeper bass, and can get as loud as a typical Bluetooth speaker at about 89 decibels, which is more than enough volume for near-field listening. Bass extension is impressive, with the 16-inch model playing flat down to 69 hertz. The 14-inch doesn't go quite as low, but it's close. However, as you turn these up, the DSP starts reducing the low end pretty aggressively below 250 hertz, so these don't boom nearly as much as those specs indicate. So overall, it's a very solid start, but to give these any real impact at louder volumes, we need a heck of a lot more low end. In this video, I'll show you how to add a powered subwoofer to your Mac to bring this up to a proper hi-fi system capable of making movies and music sound great. Now you can use any powered subwoofer to augment the bass, but if you want something that is as compact and portable as your Mac, by far the best option is the Mini-Rig subwoofer. It's a tiny sub that packs a 40 watt Class D amp and long throw 2.75 inch driver into a compact anodized aluminum tube with rear firing port. The Mini-Rig sub costs $155 in the US through Amazon, and yeah, that's more than a full-size budget sub like the Polk PSW-10, but these are completely different beasts. The Mini-Rig is super unique because it's battery-powered and super portable. Connect the sub to the MacBook Pro's headphone jack with a standard 3.5mm audio cable, and you're good to go. Well, not quite, because as soon as you do that, it will mute the internal MacBook Pro speakers. But fear not, there is a workaround. First, launch the built-in audio MIDI setup app on your Mac. You might need to search for it. Tap the plus button in the lower left-hand corner and choose the Create Multi-Output Device option. In the settings, check both the external headphones and internal MacBook Pro speaker options, and at this point, I would suggest giving this a snappier name, like MacBook Pro Plus Sub. Next, in the volume control, you can choose your snazzy new multi-output device, and you should now hear sound coming from both the speakers and the sub at the same time. Pretty slick. At this point, you'll likely want to adjust the sub level to bring things into balance with the MacBook Pro speakers. The Mini-Rig sub has a low and high level input toggle that can be switched from the front button, but I found it was either too quiet or too loud. For more control, you can adjust the sub level precisely by clicking on the external headphones option in the Audio MIDI Setup app and use the volume slider there. I found the sweet spot for me was the sub on low level in the output set to about 75%, but adjust to your liking. So how much better does this sound with the sub? Well, it's a massive improvement. That's night and day. Now every speaker demo on YouTube sounds like garbage, so take the overall sound with a grain of salt and just focus on how much bigger and better this sounds with the sub on.
Impressive, right? When using the Mac on a table or desk, I usually just tuck the sub behind the monitor for a super tidy look. All I can see is the headphone cable and it hardly takes any additional desk space. If I'm lounging on the couch, I'll usually tuck the sub on the floor under the couch so I don't step on it. Outside, I can usually put it on the ground near my chair, and in all cases, the sub is barely seen, but definitely heard. Portability and simplicity is the biggest advantage of this setup. You can use your laptop on your actual lap and still have amazing sound. You can't do that with dedicated computer speakers or monitors. The other thing is this keeps the magic of spatial audio that you'd lose with standard external speakers. This is a super immersive effect. It's great with music and fantastic when watching movies with Dolby Atmos. One annoyance with a multi-output setup is the built-in volume control doesn't work anymore, so you can't use the slider or keys on your keyboard to make adjustments. You can adjust the volume in the MIDI control panel or within the app itself, but it's not nearly as convenient. Thankfully, there's an incredible app called SoundSource by indie developer Rogue Amoeba, and that takes the setup to the next level. The app costs $40, and I know that's a bit steep, but it does so much that I think it's 100% worth it. Now, first off, it lets you control the volume normally through the hardware keys and volume slider, so that alone is worth the price of admission, but it does so much more. You can add a bunch of effects like a 10 band or a parametric equalizer, low and high pass filters, compressors, delay, you name it. I use the 10 band EQ to maximize the sound. In my EQ, I tame the highs a bit and I fill in some of the mid bass that's missing to make the speaker sound a bit more neutral and hi-fi. Apple caps the volume of the speakers well before it distorts. I wanted to get a lot more output and I found that by nudging the EQ sliders up all the way across the board, I could increase the amount of signal going into the amplifier and get a lot more sound. I have one EQ preset that boosts the volume by six decibels and tweaks the levels a bit, and I have a second one that boosts it by almost 10 decibels. Now, the reason I have both of these is normally I use the 6 dB version, but if I need to crank it up to 10, I can, but there is going to be a bit of a trade-off in quality because at that point, you could be overloading the signal. To my ears, the speakers still sound super clean even when cranked up, so I'm not sure why Apple limits them so aggressively. So the last thing I wanted to try out is a wireless setup. However, in my testing, it didn't really pan out, mostly because when you use a wireless protocol, it introduces latency. So that means that the subwoofer would be playing slightly out of sync with the main speakers, and it really muddies up the sound. Remember, you can try this now with any powered subwoofer you have lying around. You just need a three and a half millimeter to RCA cable like this one. So give it a try before you commit to something like the mini rig sub. And honestly, if you're just using this on your desk, a full-size sub will sound even better. All right, so that's my new minimal laptop speaker setup, and I think it sounds incredible. It's so powerful that you can easily use this to fill a whole room with sound. And I truly think this is a much better choice than a typical pair of computer speakers, especially if you like working on the go. If you try this, be sure to let me know how it worked out for you in the comments. If you want to know more about the mini rig speakers and subwoofer, check out my review video. If you like videos like this, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching everyone. Till next time.